Hey again, it's me, Boo, back with part 14 of my uh, mainstream fragrance collection. And I'm just going to get started. Well, ooh, actually, first, um, I did want to say, oh, hi, J Love. Anyway, um, also, uh, my when I first started this, my niece came on and made a comment, just being her fabulous, sweet, supportive self. And, of course, to her, I'm Aunt Boo or Auntie Boo. And so that's how she addressed me. Well, it kind of snowballed after that. And now people think I want to be called Aunt Boo or Auntie Boo. Um, honestly, I really don't care. You know, um, it's uh, I find with names, people are going to call you what they want to anyway. So um, I just feel really lucky that it isn't something really derogatory. So... If you want to call me Aunt Boo, that's fine. If you want to call me Boo, that's fine. So there you go. End of that. So anyway, I'm going to get started. And this first one I bought when it first came out. And I'm a huge Angel fan. Been wearing it on and off for years and years. And it's one that my husband really loves. And so um, also Thierry Mouglet has had several other fragrances that I've really loved. So I blind bought this one. Um, and this is a limited edition Angel, or not Angel, Innocent Rock. It's a black bottle. It's really kind of cool etched glass, and it's got this red ruby looking star on the top. Anyway, um, it's, um, it's kind of boozy. It's, um, kind of reminds me of cheap champagne and wine that's about to go bad mixed together oh boy I really didn't make that sound very appealing did I it, the dry down is actually much better than the top notes um, it gets a little sweeter uh, a little warmer because right now I, I just interpret this as being a really cold scent not for cold weather just the scent itself is cold whereas ambers and cinnamons and vanilla those are more warm scents to me Anyway, so I'll tell you what's in it. And again, this is Terry Mugley's uh, Innocent Rock. Um, and there's nothing anybody says this smells similar to. The heart reveals, oh, let's start with the top notes. It brings a cocktail of sweet lychee, grape liqueur with seductive accords of, uh, which accentuate glamorous, whiny effect whiny whiny effect oh like wine yeah not like wine but like wine uh, and create delicate fruity rapture with vibrant notes of forbidden fruits the heart reveals red rose and finest quality black pepper which adds glamorous rock impression to the new fragrance and gives it completely different dimension with its peppery aroma pepper maybe Maybe that's what I'm smelling. Maybe. It's a weird pepper, though. It's not a pepper I really like too much. I really wanted to like this. I always get bummed when stuff like that happens. So, anyway, it'll probably go on my glass table where the rest of the bottles that I just want to look at and probably not going to wear. Um, I don't know, though. I may revisit it. Psh, who knows? So... Anyway, in this next one, I also got for the bottle. <laughs> but it's so pretty. <clears throat> I can't be blamed. I can't. This is Fairy by Van Cleef and Arpels. Ha oh, ha. Oh. Isn't that gorgeous? This bottle is just beautiful. This cobalt blue etched diamond looking glass they got going on here it's so pretty oh i just love this love this and it has got some weight to it let me tell you it is heavy and then you take the top off and the magic goes away with the fairy um you'd think with such a cool bottle they put something really in fabulous in here but here's what I figured out about that okay 
Here's a theory. They make these gorgeous bottles because they know people are going to buy it for the bottle and then they put the crap, the bottom of the barrel stuff, the stuff they've rejected, the stuff they're like, eh, you know, they'll put that in there because they know they're going to buy, people are going to buy the bottle. Then they put the fragrances, my favorites, you know, the ombre and aguil and those in these really plain bottles because they know it's the fragrance that sells, not the bottle. So what do you think? Am I onto something there? I think I'm onto something there. Because pretty much every one of my favorite bottles has stinky juice or bland juice in it. And then my the plainest bottles have my favorites in them. So it is an enigma wrapped up in a conundrum sprinkled with a little bit of perplexity. So this last one, oh, did I tell you what anybody says that Fairy smells like, um, oh, did I even tell you what's in it? I didn't even tell you, did I tell you what's in it? No. Okay, fairy, back to fairy. I'm, I go too far again. Um, yeah, okay, top notes, violet with green notes, which are refreshing and exciting. Not, I wasn't refreshed or excited. Uh, accompanied by a blend of floral, floral notes, Italian mandarin, and fruity accord of black currant. Heart encompasses Bulgarian rose with a hint of Egyptian jasmine. The base notes introduce accords of iris from Florence with elegant woody accords of precious wood and Haiti vetiver. Really? Hmm. Okay, I smell a little tart, the black currant, the mandarin, some floral, a little iris. I don't really smell a lot of wood, a lot of vetiver. I don't know. It's boring. But who cares? Because look at this bottle. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Oh. So that one is definitely going to go on my glass shelf because I, I have to display this. And in fact, I'm almost thinking of dumping the juice out. That's how little I care about the juice. And I don't know, put ombre Nagil in here, or some hot, sexy beast like that in here. So next one I'm gonna go to, it has a plain bottle. So I'm thinking I like it and I'm thinking I'd be right. This one I actually got at Sephora and on Fragrantica, they did not have it listed as one of La Vanilla's uh, flavors for their fragrances, but I have it in my hands and I found it at Sephora, so I know it's there. And this is the Vanilla Blackberry. Oh, this one is really good. I like it very much. And there's not a lot of vanilla until the dry down. It's really all about the berries at the top. And they are really strong. But they're delish. And I will, uh, I had to go on Sephora's website to get the ingredients in this. Um, it says, infuses pure essential oils with vitamin rich goji berry and kakadu, kakadu plum. Okay. With a daily dose of 30 essential vitamins and minerals. It's a fragrance that not only smells good, but is also good for you. Hmm. Almost sounds like something you should sprinkle on your oatmeal in the morning. Um, is that all it says? Really? I could have swore. Oh, here. Uh, it, uh, this provocative blend of ripe blackberry, juicy raspberry, velvet iris, and warm Madagascar vanilla. Hmm. So there you go. So what the heck is the kakadu plum? Oh, that must be the base of all of the vanillas. Oh, the La Vanillas. Oh, okay. Well, see, I just learned something. So all of the La Vanillas contain this vitamin-rich goji berry and kakadu <laughs> plum. I love that word, kakadu. Um, and vitamins and minerals. And then this one also contains the ripe blackberry, juicy raspberry, velvet iris, and warm Madagascar vanilla. And like I said, the vanilla, you really don't smell till the dry down. It is strong berry with a touch of iris and it's really a, a very lovely iris mm, i do like this and this is one i 
uh, wear during the day to work, to work out. It doesn't matter. I would even layer it and wear it at night too. So um, I guess that's it um, for part 14. I'll be back with, uh, um, I'm thinking my special edition Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab video. It won't actually be in the series of niche. It'll be like the Amber, Am, Ombre Nargil um, uh, video, um, kind of a 0.5, I guess. But anyway, there's just so many of these uh, uh, BPALs that I just think they need to have their own video because I don't think people understand how good of a uh, per, uh, fragrance oil company, niche company this is. And I, I just really think people should check them out more. So um, anyway, again, this is Boo. Hope you have a fabulous day. And I hope it's warmer in San Francisco than it is here. Oh, it's kind of ugly here right now. So I'll see you all later. Peace.